It's such a joy and a delight to have you join us for today's broadcast. I trust that today's broadcast will be a blessing to you. Why don't you sit back, relax, and please don't change that channel and let us see what God has to say to us today. Never let that be the reason why you do any good thing that you do. It's interesting the metaphor that Jesus uses for the word of God. He calls it a seed. I don't want what God has for you, but I want all that God has for me. It's not a straight line between two points. The life is a roller coaster ride. That the highs and lows with life. In fact, it's the valley experiences of life that enable us to develop an appreciation for the mountain tops of life. For we cannot appreciate summer if we have not been through winter. We will have no gratitude for day if we have not sojourned in the night. Even those of us that have children, we strive to find a balance because left to us, we don't want them to have any pain, any hardship. But sometimes when everything is handed to you, it could kill the drive and the zeal and the tenacity that you have. The, the, the I must make it innateness that we must find a balance between helping and guiding them instead of just handing everything to them because a loving parent has to be more interested in the child being responsible than just being comfortable. Another person said that life is a mixture at the same time of good times and bad times. You know the story of the wheat and the tear that was planted at the same time and grew up all at the same time. Many times life can be a two-edged sword that if you look at one side, there's so much blessing and so much victory and so much, uh, 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 so much breakthrough. And then you look at another side of life and then there's challenge and pain and turmoil. All at the same time, life. But it is important that we understand that God allows trouble to prove that he is a bringer outer of trouble. He is. He is. He is. He, how will you know he can bring you out if you didn't get through? In fact, many times the proof that God is with you is not that you didn't go through trouble. The proof that God is with you is the fact that the trouble that sank other folk, you were able to swim on. <laughs> and you yourself look back over your life, and you know the only way I came out of that must be that God was with me. 
David said, by this I know that God is with me. It's not that, it's not that he's not with me, but what makes me know to have the assurance, to have the confidence, to know that I know that I know, I know that God is with me, for he has not made my enemies to triumph over me. Oh, that's how I know, because if it wasn't for God, the devil would have killed me, and you would have killed me. <laughs> but God, but God, in spite of all what life has thrown at me, but God, in spite of all of the situations that I had to wade through, but God, the great gospel singer Andrew Crouch said, sang, that how would I have known that God could solve problems if I didn't have problems? So as a righteous man, a good man, a godly man, a Christian man, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God has the promise for you. You will confront troubles. We don't want to hear that. We don't like to hear that. But any preacher that will not tell you that has not told you the whole of the Bible. Many are the righteous, the hardships, the perplexities of the righteous. But regardless of the brand of trouble that you had to go through, you must always remind yourself while in the trouble that this life will not end until I come out of this one too. <laughs> That's why he called you an overcomer. So, you know, that's how you know that the world is not coming to an end. And that your life is not coming to an end. Trouble. You know, because you know that with the promise of trouble is a promise of deliverance from trouble. He rescues them out of every one of them. You are coming out of this. In the name of Jesus. Many are the hardships, the perplexities of the righteous. But the Lord rescues them from every single one of them. That has to be your mindset. That has to be your mentality. That has to be your tenacity. That, 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 that I am going to come out of this one too. And sometimes the tendency when, they, when you realize that you birth children and not angels. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Can I tell you something? <laughs> You're sure you still love me if I tell you? They didn't get that from God. They got it from you. Isn't it funny how when we become parents, we forget? What's wrong with children of yesterday? What? If I videoed what your parents said exactly about you. <laughs> That's who they are, children. They are human. They are going to manifest their own brand of weaknesses. They're not strong in any area. You will not need to teach them how to sin before you see sin. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Where did they get that from? Got it from your DNA. <laughs> That's where they got it from. But we are not hopeless or defenseless. Or oh, feel sorry for him. Oh, I can't believe Junior either. I can't believe Junior. Junior needs teaching. You don't need, a child does not need any teaching to do wrong because they are human. Because they got their wrong, they, are, they, are, they, they got a wrong nature from you. We all got it from Adam. But a child needs teaching to do right. 
Praise the Lord. For every one of us to, to, to be responsible, uh, uh, whatever profession, we could go years in school, years in college, because we need to be taught. So when Jesus saw them rowdy, he did what every responsible parent, adult, guardian, shepherd, somebody in a situation of influence, not complain or feel bad. How could he have done that? He didn't learn that from me. He didn't learn that from this house. How? It's time to teach. Not force. Not fight. Teach. Praise the Lord. So he began to teach them. And taught them. After a while, they were hungry. It's a challenging thing to deal with a hungry man. Hungry men lose their spirituality. They do. I don't care how spiritual, how nice, how compared, how, you know, carry himself with so much dignity. All that dignity, dignity, is because he's not hungry enough. When I'm talking about hungry, I don't just mean food. Okay. Get the, get, listen to it on YouTube. Listen to it real slow. You get it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, you know, when I turned 50, even before when I turned 40, so you, you have to start eating right and you can't eat this. In those days when I used to walk in the ER at night and I'm hungry. See, all that eats rice, eats rice, vegetables, green, green uh, is when you are not so hungry. <laughs> it's nice, nice sermon. And I'm hungry. I drive out of the inn. Make them sit in ranks, in groups, in order. Get some order going. Because I cannot walk a miracle as long as there's chaos. I cannot give you a better house. If the one I gave you now, I go to your closet and your clothes are all over the floor. No, no, no. You're not ready for it. Because many times the key to getting better is not prayer. The key to getting better is using the one you have now, using it well. <clears throat> you want a better car? Well, let's go see the one you have, how you're using it. We look at the car. The car looks like you're not ready. Praise the Lord. Order and structure, use well. I told you guys once, I don't rumple money. No, I never, you never catch me rumpling money. See how nice, they all put nice. You, <laughs> because I want more of it, that's all. Because what, what, what listen, what it's a spirit and it's a spiritual principle. Whoever or whatever you treat right, keep coming to you. Whoever or whatever you treat wrong, runs from you. I don't want money running from you. So those of you, you they give you money, you just, you run police. Uh -uh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now you want some of my own. <laughs> Without the oil you have. <laughs> No, but it's true. I'm, 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 I'm trying to use, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to use satire to, to teach a principle. The Bible talks about this. Money is a spirit. That's why it's called currency. It flows. Money flows from the hands of those who mistreat it and have no regards. You just spend anyhow. No budget. No thing. But you get the money. You just spend it anyhow. You, you treat it anyhow. To, anyway, that's, that's, another, that's another thing. I can't, give, I can't give you everything in one day. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Structure and order. Structure and order is the foundation for miracle. God is obsessed with order. Order. 
Almost 7,000 years ago, he created the day and night. And for almost 7,000 years, we never see, oh, just for this one week, we never encountered a day. No! He said the waters that are separate from the land and the boundaries have been there, held in by God's word for almost 7,000 years because God is a God of order. And if you want more of God in your life, you have to get more order in your life, more structure. So I have to look, what do I have? Because the miracle is going to be what I have. What do I have? So I have to start organizing and budgeting and structuring in this time because God has given us a foundation that this post COVID. He's going to elevate, but you've got to be ready for it. You have to be introspective. Got to get organized and provide a platform for God to provide a breakthrough. Jesus said, what do you have? Bring it. Five loaves and two fish. Not enough. Whatever is not enough, when placed in the hands of the God who is more than enough, becomes more than enough. His name is El Shaddai. So I know we've been through COVID. And some of us have, may have lost some friends. and May have lost some health. And you may have lost some money. You may have lost some job. You may have lost some opportunity. You may have lost, lost this and that and the other. But what do you have left? You still have your mind? You still have your family? You still have your health. You still have your home. Start thanking God for that. Take what you have left and look unto heaven and say, thank God, because there are many people that went through far worse loss than you've been through, than you went through. So instead of worrying about what left, start thinking about what is left. Because what is left is what God is going to use to bring you the breakthrough. God never needs what left you to bring you the breakthrough. Let me say it again. God never needs what left you to bring you the breakthrough. Sometimes you lose some things that are painful. You lose people. You lose friends. But John said, if they were of us, they would not have left us. Because those who are yours never leave you. Whatever is yours never leaves. So he took it. Took it to heaven. He blessed it. That's what you and I have to do every morning when you wake up. Lord, I thank you for my health. I thank you for my home. I thank you for provision. I thank you. Start, be, start thinking, not complaining, not murmuring, not grumbling. Start, start thinking, start being grateful and showing gratitude. Lord, I thank you. Because gratitude is like manure. It's like fertilizer. It expands and enlarges whatever it is you have. He took it. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it. You got to give it. You got to use it. You can't multiply it. Some of us, God is going to give us creativity, insight, this post-COVID, ideas that God wants to get behind and bring immense breakthrough. You cannot afford to sit on it. The five loaf, two fish will remain five loaf and two fish if Jesus did not break it and give it out. The multiplication occurred as he began to give it out. Stop waiting to see the multiplication before you start thinking, no, 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 no. Take what it is you have. You got to take it. 
and start using it. Start giving it. Start breaking it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They give it to the disciples and it was in the breaking, in the giving and the breaking that the thing multiplied, the, multipli- the multiplication, it's in the, ble- it's in the breaking and the giving after blessing and thanking. And breaking and giving. That's what you got to do. Whatever your gift, talents is, you got to bring it out and start using it. Uh, listen, God gives us more along the way than he does at the beginning. Did you hear what I just said? God gives us more along the way than he does at the beginning. He that observes the wind will not sow. When we were talking to bankers to build this church, we were less than 15 people. You hear what I said? I look back and I'm like, either one of you was praying for me or something. I must have lost my mind. 15 members and I'm going to the bank asking for a million dollar loan. (laughs) So I went to one, our bank, uh, Washington Mutuals. Now, well, they are now extinct. Maybe they should have given grace loan. Maybe they would still be in business. (laughs) That's the church's bank where we put church money. Can you imagine? So I went to them. I said, uh, mm, yeah. the, the guy said, he said, what, what, what do you plan to build? How many cities? I said, well, about a thousand. He said, how many are you? I said, 15. He said, 15 or 50? I said, 15. I said, but, but in New York, we have about 250. He said, all those 215 people in New York, do you plan to bring them to Houston? That's what he told me. I can't forget. You're going to bring all of them to Houston? I said, Sorry, Doc. What should I call you, Reverend or Doctor? Anytime it's, 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 uh, should I call you Reverend or Doctor? You know it's because they want to give you a sound no, but they want to say it politely. <laughs> and then the guy say, with all your Reverend, and all your doctor, this one you're a fool. You want, to be, you want me to give you one million loan for a thousand people? Now, now, even though they didn't give us, do you know that by the time we were ready, both Chase and Bank of America were rushing to give us the loan. So, if somebody told you no, that's all it is. That person told you no. Plenty yes that's outside. You just, you just keep on walking. It's funny. I think about that. Washington Mutual, the church's bank said no. Yet two bigger banks were fighting for the deal. I did not wait till all of you came before we started building. If I did, I'll still be waiting. I'm not teaching a principle. No, it's true. With the 15 people, we started. And we started building. And look at what the Lord has done. That's what you, that's what you have to learn. God gives you more along the way. It is in your giving it out and, and dispensing it. That's where you see the multiplication. If you hold on to it and you're waiting for it to expand in the house, and it's, ne- it's never going to expand that way. You have to take whatever it is you have and start breaking it and start giving it and and transacting with it and using it. That's what calls a breakthrough. That's what attracts the destiny helpers. They come as you use what you got. Everybody ate. When it started, it was not enough. Five loaves, two fish. When we when he started giving it out, everybody ate and were filled. And twelve fragments is a collective because God hates waste. God hates waste. 
Not throwing food away or when there are people starving. starving. Don't, don't do that. It's an attitude and a spring you must have because, listen, he gives you more than enough because he wants you to help somebody else. We all start out with not enough. All of us start out with not enough. And we like to reduce not enough to just money. Many times it's more than just money. Sometimes it's your health. Sometimes it's your peace. Sometimes it's your joy. Sometimes it's, it's, it's relationships at home. Not enough. But God is the God that wants to take that thing, whatever it is you have that's not enough, and make it more than enough. More than enough peace, more than enough joy, more than enough health, more than enough vitality, more than enough flourishing relationship, more than enough. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And of course, more than enough money because you need it. And because God wants to use you to be a blessing to somebody else who needs it. So gather up all the fragments. More than enough. The miracle is in that that's left. Let me close by using my daughter like I did in the first service. We used her to preach. The girlfriend is now 20 years old. I can't try it now, but when she was you know, about one, I used to play with her. I would carry her and I would throw her up. And before she falls, I will carry her. And initially, she would be so scared. But later, she learned that this guy is just having fun with me. God told me to tell somebody out there that whether it's COVID or cop brutality or economic devastation or unemployment, that guy, he's just having fun with you. He's just having fun. All of the troubles you went through, and you'd be, ah, perplexity. Ah. He will never let your feet touch the ground before he rescues you. You think you're going to die. You know, sometimes we go through some things, we literally feel we're going to die. But you're here. You're here. The same God who delivered you from that. He will deliver you from this too. So thankful for the opportunity to be able to come to your home, your office, or wherever it is you're viewing this broadcast. Now, if you don't know Jesus, can I pray with you? Just say this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come and be my Lord. I receive you today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, please call to let us know. Our phone number is on the screen. We would love to pray with you. Or if you want us to pray with you concerning anything, we would love to agree with you in prayer. But be kind to go onto our website, call into our church office, let us hear from you. We would love to pray with you. Additionally, if the message has been a blessing to you and you want the message in its entirety, for a small donation to the ministry, we will rush the CD or the DVD to you. Call in, let us know, we'll get it down to you. And if you're ever in the Houston area, we would love to have you fellowship with us at Grace International Church. Look forward to seeing you. And remember these words from Romans chapter 5 verse 17, the B part says, And we who have received abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness shall rule and reign in Christ Jesus. We will be back at this same station at this same time next week to bring you more word from the Lord. We love you. God bless you.